Today I'd like to bring you the second of my uh, children's book reviews for some of the children's books that I've been reading this year. Two of the books that I want to talk about in this video I read for the primary school book club on Twitter. Um, I've talked about this briefly in my other two videos but if you don't know about this it's a club on Twitter. It's run by a teacher in a school and it includes teachers, TAs, um, authors, readers from all over Twitter, kids as well and every month a new book is chosen, everybody reads the book and then at the end of the month we have a discussion with the author, we can ask questions and um, teachers share their kind of resources for using this book in the classroom and it's just it's a really fun community so I really recommend that you get involved with this whether or not you're involved in schools. The first book that I want to talk about is um, Bright Storm and this was the first book that I read for the primary school book club and this is fantastic and just look look at the cover it's so good and it has a map on the inside flap and just oh I love I love a good map in a book but yes this book was fantastic I gave this four out of five stars it's about two twins Maudie and Arthur whose father has um, apparently died on a trip to the, be the first to reach the South Polaris Polaris? Pole it's South Pole but they call it the South Polaris and um, but also he hasn't just died, he's brought dishonour on their family name in the kind of League of Explorers and the Geographical Society because he cheated and stole fuel from another competitor's ship. So they lose everything, they lose their house, they're sent to live with these awful people and everything's just really rubbish. So they decide to run away and join in with a second expedition to be the first to reach the South Polaris with, um, what was her name? Oh, she was really cool. Um, begins with H. Harriet. Harriet. She was awesome. So she's going to be their captain and she has this fantastic ship and they set out to try and be not only be the first to reach the South Polaris but also find out what happened to their father and whether he is still alive. Arthur, one of the twins, he's also um, got a disability. He has a mechanical arm and I loved how Huddy dealt with this throughout the uh, book and it's just such a cool adventure. It's so much fun. There's so many kind of like old tr traditional kind of around the world in 80 days sort of vibes to this and it's just so full of adventure and fun and really creative and funny characters but also like a real sense of danger there's a little bit of magic as well and I love the world building like you can tell the author has really thought about the world I think I think it's the first in a series there's a subtle suggestion in the end that there's possibly more adventures to come which is really exciting so I really really recommend this one um, especially to reluctant readers because it's just so much fun and like sky ships there's sky ships and magical wolves and adventure and there's like explosions and the northern lights and just oh not the northern lights southern lights and i loved how um vashti Hardy broke down a lot of the gender roles as well especially in something like the geographical society which is traditionally in our world a very male dominated thing so it was really great to see that there were so many women involved in that as well so yes, fantastic book. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I want to talk about, oh dear, um, oh yes, I met the author at a signing so I got, I got it signed for my little sister. So this one would be going to her on her birthday in November. Um, but anyway, this is Sky Chases by Emma Carroll. Emma Carroll is one of my favourite children's historical writers. Um, I have several of her other books here and I'm really looking forward to her newest one which is out in the summer. What was that one called? Secrets of the Sun King I think and that looks fantastic. This one um, is a little bit different from her other books. It's from an, uh, the Big Reads, no the Big Idea competition which is where people of the general public can suggest you know, ideas that they would like to see made into a book and a author is chosen to make that a reality. Neil Jackson he won that idea and Emma Carroll made it into a book. And the original idea, I think, was that the first balloon flight in Paris was actually kind of piloted by animals. And Emma Carroll kind of takes that idea and twists it into um, this really great adventure about this girl called Magpie, who she's a street thief and somehow ends up um, getting involved with this family who the who are the Mont Mongol, how do you say that? The Montgolfier brothers? They're the famous uh, like French guys who 
they created the first um, hot air balloon. Oh, Magpie herself has a pet rooster. So there's a lot of really random pets in this. And I loved her um, dynamic with Pierre, who was the son of one of the Montgolfier brothers. Um, they were just such like a fun, cute like friendship. And it was lovely to see that develop. It's, it's just such a fun book. There's like saboteurs and spies and the king and Marie Antoinette, I think at one point. And I think Emma Carroll just did what she does best with this genre is make it feel very alive. And so this book, as I've already said, is uh, signed for my little sister. So I'm very excited to give that to her and see what she thinks. But I also enjoyed it very much and I gave it four stars. The next book that I read is also one that I read for the primary school book club on Twitter. And this one I think was last month, I can't remember, I didn't read it that long ago, and that's Infinite Lives of Maisie Day by Christopher Edge. Um, this one I only gave three stars, but it's not because I didn't enjoy it, it's quite hard to explain why I only gave it three stars. But the story itself is quite um, simple, but also it's got a lot of depth to it. It's a fantastic book to use in schools, I think, and lots of people have been doing that. So there's lots of resources for it floating around if you can find them on Twitter. The story is very unusual. It's told in alternating chapters from the same point of view. So the main character, Maisie Day, one day she wakes up and it's her birthday. But when she steps out of her room, her house is not behaving in a way that makes sense in physics um, and she's stuck in this alternate reality and all sorts of weird things happen and she's really frightened and she's completely on her own. In the other chapter Maisie wakes up and the day goes exactly as it's supposed to. She wakes up, she um, meets her family, she's talking about her presents that she's hoping to receive and planning for a birthday party and arguing with her sister, uh, Lily. So the parallel timelines are really cool. I, I can see how it's quite confusing possibly to some kids, but it was really interesting seeing what, what the point was and where it was going and this whole mystery of what is happening. Is it um, alternate realities? Is it different dimensions? Is it something that's happened in the past? Or is it like Groundhog Day where it's repeating? You had no idea. And the science in this is very cool as well. Maisie Day, she is, um, she's only like 10, I think, but she's already doing like a university degree. She's like a genius at science and maths. So she knows so many things about science, which is how she can explain what is going wrong with her world in the kind of alternate dimension chapters. And the scientific theories are, some of them I'd never heard of before and some of them were, are, when I googled them, are really quite complex uh, theories but the way Christopher Edge kind of inserts them into the book it makes them so accessible and so easy to understand. It was really really cool to see that, um, especially the book's so short, like I really admire how concise he is in this and how he gets so much information across and the story and the depth of character in so few words. like. And also sprayed edges, so cool. So the three star thing, I think for me it just felt a little bit underwhelming. I'd heard a lot of hype about this book and my expectations were very high. And I think this is a really great book, but some of the explanations about the ending and how things kind of pan out um, didn't really, they weren't fully explained I don't think, or I just didn't understand them. And I also don't think this book would have much re-readability for me. It's not the kind of ending that is easily forgettable. The mystery's the biggest drive. So I think that's why I brought it down to three stars. I think it's a brilliant book for kids um, and I will be passing it on to my uh, siblings. Um, definitely great for science levels, but for me this didn't quite reach the expectations I had I think. The next one that I read I gave a full five stars to. I really love this book and it's another one with an absolutely beautiful cover. This is The Secret of the Night Train by Sylvia Bishop and I picked this one up thinking it'd be kind of like um, a historical fiction, maybe like an Agatha Christie for kids and I was very very wrong. Um, it's actually set in the modern day and it's not a murder mystery and it actually says on the back what it is. Um, it says, all aboard the night train, um, where no one is as they seem. As Max takes off on a thrilling journey across Europe by train, can she unravel the mystery of a priceless missing diamond and find a way to bring the jewel thief to justice? So I should have known from the blurb, this is not a murder mystery, but 
I don't know, somehow in my head I had it stuck that it was a murder mystery, but I, I enjoyed it so much, I was very glad it wasn't what I expected, and it's just such a fun adventure, it's really great. Um, Max is a really introspective and very curious character, uh, she's like impossible not to love, she's just so fascinating, the narrative voice really lends her just such an aff affectionate kind of like, I just want to give her a hug the whole way. And she battles uh, nerves about leaving home and homesickness and there's a really great um, kind of exploration of homesickness and wanderlust and the difference between them and how one can turn into the other and I really, I'd never read anything quite like that so I really appreciate that. Every character in this book is equally fascinating and unique and completely crazy and I wouldn't say they're unrealistic but they're fun, they're what you expect from a children's book but they have depth to them as well and I just I loved Sister Bernadette the nun she's just fantastic and Rupert was also one of my favourite characters he just felt like a very kind of clumsy and friendly kind of guy the writing has really great pace um the flow feels effortless the narrative voice feels very confident like there was nothing in this book that felt um unnecessary or excessive or out of place it just felt like a very very tight novel and the ending was very satisfying and I really hope we do get some more books about Max because she's really cute and I love her. So I really, um, really recommend this one. Um, it's one of my favourites so far this year. The last book that I want to talk about is How To Be by Bren McDibble. I love her name. That's such a great author name. I gave this book three and a half stars. I picked this book up because I've been very interested in environmental fiction um, recently, um, especially in children's literature and I haven't really seen much of it. So this one's a new book. The main character, um, she talks in a kind of dialect, uh, there's lots of little bits of slang and things like that and I found it quite hard to get into. So I didn't expect to like this as much as I did. Um, it's about a little girl who works on a fruit farm in the future um, where bees do not exist, um, they've all died out. She loves this fruit farm but everybody lives in poverty. She's no no other life though so she kind of seems quite naive to the situation her family in. Her mum goes to the city and she earns a lot of money there and brings it back for them but one day her mum comes back and says she, um, she has to go to the city with her um, to help her earn more money. She ends up working in this rich family's house with her mum in the city and the rich family they are actually really nice and they have a daughter who uh, she's agoraphobic she refuses to leave the house and I loved the development of Peony and oh, what was her name? The daughter, anyway. Um, the daughter's relationship, their friendship was so cute and adorable. I wasn't so sure about how the book deals with phobias and uh, like chronic fear. Like this girl has been scared of going outside for such a long time and because of such real reasons but I didn't feel that was explored in a kind of depthful way or um, really it felt too easy to cure her I guess but um, Peony is really cool, she's a fun character, she's very no-nonsense, bit of a badass, um, very determined and strong-willed and I loved her sense of protectiveness over her friends and um, her mum, um, the relationship between her mum and her felt very realistic as well but what let this book down for me, I think, was that it didn't seem that the author really knew how to end it. The ending kind of just dragged out and it just, there was more things and there was a big rush of trying to insert all these extra things and tragedies and emotional impact to make the ending more solid. But it just felt a bit frayed. Uh, there were also a lot of characters that, who were absent for most of the book who got a lot of time at the end, but it just felt too late, like I didn't care about them. So their struggles being represented right at the end as a kind of, oh wait, care about this person, felt it too dragged out, too, that wasn't the point of the book. I felt like um, the focus of the book through most of it had been about this friendship and dealing with fear and phobias and trying to get back home, but then the ending just kind of went on a completely different tangent. There's lots of really difficult themes in this book like um, poverty and child abuse and physical neglect and um, greed and dependency and classism but it all kind of fittles out into this uh, very kind of 
fake hope thing and all tidied up and but there were a lot of things left hanging that I felt actually that would have been better to deal with head on so that was a bit of a shame for me but I'm actually really looking forward to reading anything else by her if you've read any of these books I'd love to hear from you um, especially your thoughts on some of the ones that I haven't really heard talked about on booktube at all um, a lot of these books are very new so um, be good to hear people's opinions yeah over and out